Hello, my name is Michael Pfeffer. I'm a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University, and today I'll be reviewing our work in the intersection of algorithmic fairness, ensemble learning, and automated search. This was work done in collaboration with IBM Research, specifically with Martin Herzl, Samuel Hoffman, Kieran Kate, Parikh Shadran, and Avraham Shinar. I'll first go over the motivation for our work by reviewing examples of algorithmic bias, introducing current approaches to bias mitigation, and arguing how ensemble learning may improve mitigation techniques. Then I will explain our experimental setup, specifically the mitigation and ensemble approaches considered, as well as the two types of model configuration search we conducted. Lastly, I will summarize our results and conclude with a discussion and interpretation of those findings. As AI and machine learning techniques become increasingly integrated into high-impact systems, the replication and amplification of existing societal biases via these techniques have moved from theoretical questions to real-world issues. For instance, a ProPublica article has detailed how a model trained to predict likelihood of committing a second crime had higher false positive rates for black Americans and higher false negative rates for white Americans. Research papers have also uncovered racial bias in healthcare algorithms and gender bias in language model word embeddings. In the generative image space, it has been shown that AI can produce pictures in line with existing harmful stereotypes, such as notions that CEOs must be male or nurses must be female. Bias mitigation consists of data processing interventions to reduce algorithmic bias. Three types of bias mitigation are as follows. Pre-estimator mitigation, pre-processing training data to, rem to remove bias, in-estimator mitigation, training a model resistant to bias, and post-estimator mitigation, altering model predictions to remove bias. Unfortunately, each type of mitigation suffers from high volatility, meaning that fairness can vary across data splits, and fair-seeming models only evaluated on training data can be unfair in practice. We also note that algorithmic bias is a socio-technical problem that cannot be solved by technology approaches alone, but even so, technology approaches can still be helpful. Fortunately, ensemble learning is known to improve stability and predictive performance, and in our work, we ask whether we can combine mitigation with ensemble learning to improve fair and stability. However, the many potential ways to combine the two serve as a double-edged sword. On one hand, it is likely that at least one configuration may yield suitable fairness and predictive performance, but on the other, finding such a configuration via, via brute force search may be untenable with limited resources. In our work, we use 13 datasets, eight bias mitigators, and four ensembles to explore combinations of mitigation and ensemble learning. Specifically, we conducted two searches, a brute force grid search of the Cartesian product of possible configurations, and an automated search via hyperops. Overall, we find that ensembles often improve accuracy and fair stability, but the best configuration depends on factors including but not limited to the data set, metric of interest, and surrounding context. In light of our findings, we also produce a model configuration guidance diagram in accordance with our results to suggest best practices to future practitioners. Now for our experimental setup. For our search space, we consider eight bias mitigators from IBM's AF360 toolkit. These are the three pre-estimator, four in-estimator, and one post-estimator mitigator shown here. We also utilize four ensemble learning techniques from scikit-learn, bagging, boosting, stacking, and voting. The first two are homogeneous ensembles that utilize identical base estimators, with which we use decision tree classifiers by default. The last two are heterogeneous ensembles that use different base estimators. We use one each of XGBoost, Random Forest, k Neighbors, and Support Vector Machine classifiers by default. XGBoost is additionally used as a final estimator for stacking before prediction output. This figure illustrates the configurations we consider in our searches. In addition to the types of mitigation and ensemble learning, we also explore the effects of applying mitigation at the ensemble level versus the individual estimator level. See our paper for more details, but as you can see, with only three types of mitigation, four types of ensembles, and estimator level versus ensemble level mitigation, there are already many potential configurations. To evaluate the performance of different configurations, we utilize 13 different data sets primarily gathered from OpenML. Some, like Coppice, Credit G, and Adult, have been used elsewhere in machine learning literature. But we also explore new data sets, such as speed dating and nursery, based on the inclusion of features that can be considered protective attributes. For each data set, we also found the ranked feature importance of protected attributes based on an XGBoost model to fit it. For each configuration, we calculated metrics of interest pertaining to predictive performance, fairness, and resource consumption. For the first, we used performance metrics from SKLearn, such as precision, recall, and F1 score. For the second, we used the disparate impact ratio metric from AF360, the positive result prediction ratio between privileged and unprivileged groups. Lastly, we measured time and memory used during training to track resource consumption during training time. Our brute force configuration search unfolded in two steps. In step one, we first found the best pre, in, and post estimator mitigators with single estimators for each data set. 
We used decision tree classifiers were needed and five trials of threefold cross-validation to evaluate each configuration. We then filtered potential configurations to ones that yielded fairness within reasonable bounds and non-trivial precision. After filtering again to configurations with good predictive performance in terms of mean F1 across trials, we selected the mitigator with max precision for Compass or max recall for all other data sets as our best mitigator for the data set. In step two, we fixed the best mitigator configurations from step one and explored the Cartesian product of mitigators and ensembles across data sets. Note that this search also includes the ensemble's hyperparameters. Through bagging and boosting, we vary the numbers of base estimators from small to large values. For voting, we utilized either four mitigated or four unmitigated base estimators. And in the case of inestimator mitigation, we used a combination of the four mitigators we consider in our experiments. Lastly, stacking involved the same approach as voting, except that pass-through and final estimator mitigation were also hyperparameters explored. Our automated search via hyperopt involved only a single step with a guided objective. This objective used a blended score that combined predictive performance and fairness. We defined this objective to emulate parts of a brute force search in a result analysis. The latter of which will be explained in more detail soon. Now for our results. Before interpreting our calculated metrics, we realized we needed to account for differences between datasets. For instance, one dataset having more inherent unfairness or being harder to fit than another could confound certain results. Therefore, for each dataset and metric of interest, we first map all result values to the same region of space around the point of optimality if necessary. This means for disparate impact, we calculate the reciprocal of any ratios larger than one, but since F1 is bounded between zero and one, we leave F1 results alone. We then min-max scale the mean and standard deviation results, again per dataset. Lastly, we average scaled values over datasets after grouping by model configurations. So given a metric M, we refer to the average of mean values as a standardized M outcome and the average of standard deviations of the standardized M volatility. With this standardization approach, we can now answer our key research questions. First, do ensembles help with fairness? We find that ensemble learning with mitigation does not typically improve fairness relative to standalone mitigation, but ensembles do improve stability, which may be desired depending on the use case. Next, do ensembles help with predictive performance when there is mitigation? We find that even with ensembles, mitigation decreases predictive performance, Additionally, relative to standalone mitigation, mitigated ensembles typically have better outcomes or stability, but not both, and they can usually only help with one or the other. Lastly, how do ensembles affect resource consumption? We find that ensembles with more estimators typically require more resources in both time and memory than their smaller counterparts. In light of the trade-offs evidenced by results, another research objective was to distill best practices for future practitioners based on their priorities. We do so by generating a guidance diagram programmatically from our results, and we do so as follows. First, we organize all results by dataset. Next, we filter results and con corresponding configurations for each dataset to ones that occur in the top third of results for both standardized disparate impact outcome and standardized F1 outcome. Then, we place each result into one of four groups or quadrants based on the dataset's baseline fairness and size in terms of number of examples. Afterwards, we average each metric in each quadrant while grouping by model configuration. And lastly, we report the top three model configurations per quadrant and metric in our diagram. The resulting diagram is here and in our paper. As you can see, we partition our recommended configurations into four groups based on the type of data available, and we further tailor our recommendations to the desired metric to optimize. We validate our guidance diagram in two ways. The first is via leave one dataset out generations. Namely, for each dataset, we regenerated our guidance diagram with the same approach as before while excluding that dataset's results. We then measured recommended configuration differences from the original guidance diagram and found that differences were usually small, meaning our diagram was generally robust. See our paper for more detail and discussion about these results. We, then, we next validate our guidance diagram with the results of our automated hyperop search. Specifically, we compared the hyperop results to the diagram's recommendations, which was a valid comparison because the blended score optimization functions similarly to the diagram generation algorithm. We found that while Hyperop rarely recommended the same configuration, the fairness and predictive performance metrics are similar. Now to conclude with a quick discussion of our findings. First, a common response to algorithmic bias problems is to collect better data, but what even is good data is a question asked less often. Our results suggest that improving data may not just involve larger data sets in terms of number of examples, but also in number of features. See our paper for more analysis and explanation here. And we emphasize that regardless of the form data collection may take, it is important to consider the ethics, wishes, and privacy of affected individuals. Overall, we confirm that ensembles can improve fairness, stability, and provide guidance to practitioners based on their data, and we invite others to use our library available on GitHub to reproduce our results. Thank you.